Today we're going to talk about piglins and how you can barter away all your gold for loads of items. The problem with piglins are they produce so much stuff it's hard to deal with all of the items. So today I'm going to show you a fast and easy way to trade away your gold and get all the items sorted in the nether. We start off with 24 piglins in this chamber. Every nine seconds or so, they are given a gold ingot to barter away. They inspect their gold for a little bit and then they throw all of their items onto the floor. And then these pistons push all the items across this ice way where we have item sorters for each and every item, including all of the bottles and boots and books at the end, for everything to be sorted in these chests to make it nice and convenient. This all works in the nether where we don't have water and it's only controlled by this simple bit of redstone over here. So it's nice and easy to build. So before we get into the block by block tutorial, let me explain how it works. Here we have a piglin that you normally find in the nether. Now this video is inside the overworld. That's only for video production purposes to make it nice and bright and easy to see. But uh, normally you'd have to build this in the nether because that's the only place that these piglins do not transform into a zombified piglin. But having said that, all you need to do is get yourself a piglin. You then need to give it some gold and it will pick them up and inspect them. And then after a few seconds, it will decide whether it's good enough or not and then throw you some items. There are a lot of items to collect and that is one of the issues that we're going to solve in this farm today. Before we get into the big farm, let me show you this right here. This is the simplest setup you can do to barter away your gold. This is something that I showed on my channel a very long time ago when piglins first came out. And yeah, this is the simplest thing you can do. So it consists of a solid block here with a wooden pressure plate on the top, a dropper here facing into it with uh, some gold inside. You can also funnel more gold into there via a hopper and then a chest on top. And then we just have this redstone torch behind it. So to kick this thing off, you just press this button that will dispense the first gold and then the piglin will pick it up. The piglin is standing on the carpet and their head is slightly inside this block which means they can collect any gold that comes up here so as you can see it picks up one gold trades away the items and drops them on top of this hopper to get stored in the chests and as it does that a new a new ingot is then dispensed ready for it so in these tests right here i've timed this over over, over five hours and on average you get 3360 items per hour for one piglin now that's all well and good the problem with this is that all these items go into this chest and they're not sorted so ideally what we want is to be able to trade away much more gold and sort all the items. So what some people do is they have a, a, this kind of setup where you have multiple piglins in different cells. The problem here is that one hopper can only transfer 9,000 items. So if you have three piglins like this in a row, all feeding their, their items into the same hopper, you'll end up with a bottleneck because the, the hoppers don't transfer items fast enough. Because as I said here, for one piglin, it's 3,300. So once you get to three piglins, that is then gonna uh, bottleneck on, on a hopper. So this farm over here gets around that by using the ice ways and we can uh, we can trade away our gold for 24 piglins at a time which is super cool before we get into the build itself i wanted to show you a stripped down version of how the items get pushed around so imagine we have 24 piglins standing on this leaf block right here they will throw items down onto the ground now in the farm itself this is fully enclosed so uh, any items uh, always land on this leaf block they can't get stuck anywhere else because they're totally enclosed by blocks so what we do now is once the items are on the ground we first of all retract this piston to leave room for the blocks we then uh, extend this one, which pushes all of the items up against this chest so they're properly aligned. We then retract this piston and we then push this piston out like that. That pushes all the items along and the items are then halfway on the uh, halfway on the ice, but also halfway on the hoppers. That means that they get the, the speed of being able to be pushed across the ice and they don't, get, uh, they don't get slowed down too much. And then they can make it across all of the hoppers and all of these hoppers will have uh, item filters behind. So each hopper will pick up uh, the item that it, that it needs and then go into the chest underneath for sorting. But then back into the uh, back into the default position, ready for uh, the next set of items, uh, yeah, to be processed. Before we get into the build, let's take a closer look at the farm and I'll explain a bit more detail about how some of it works and how it's put together. So as I said before, there are 24 piglins uh, inside this chamber. And as you can see, as I said before, uh, it's totally enclosed. So when the items get thrown around by the piglins, they won't get stuck on any blocks or fly out of the farm. They are stuck inside. You can then see that as they drop their items and as the last item falls, uh, the pistons are perfectly timed. So they push the items onto the iceway as we've already seen. So that is done over here. We have a hopper clock just over here. And this hopper clock has got 22 items in it and so it cycles around at just the right timing that then is detected by this uh, by this observer which goes into this redstone here and this this redstone is timed to make sure that we uh, we do the right things with the, the with this piston and this piston here at the right time and push the items the other part of the redstone over here is to dispense uh, dispense the gold so what we do here is we have uh, we have a torch here with some redstone on top so this will form a, a burnout clock so this torch will pulse eight times 
uh, eight times. Well, we need 24 uh, gold each time. And so we have three, we have three droppers here. So three times eight is, your, that's your 24 ingots that get dispensed each time around, you can see there. And what we have to do is we have to make sure that the gold is distributed evenly across all of those uh, droppers for the farm to work properly. That is done by first of all, adding your gold to this chest up here on the top. The uh, hopper minecart underneath pulls the items out of that. And then because this hopper minecart is sitting on top of three uh, droppers, or three hoppers, should I say, uh, that then distributes the gold evenly. So for example, this hopper here pulls out a third of the gold and goes into this top this top dropper right here. We have this one round here, which goes into the second dropper underneath. And then this last one here goes all the way down underneath this, uh, underneath this repeater. And just under here, you can see the hopper uh, feeding into the dropper at the bottom. And that is all there is to it in terms of the, the redstone that controls all of this stuff over here. As I saw before, all of the items get pushed across the ice. We have these buttons on top to make sure uh, no mobs spawn on top of the ice. And behind here, all of these rows here are the standard Impulse SV uh, item sorter that you've seen many, many times, I'm sure, by now. And we have all of these set up for the different blocks. Now, so many items come through, we have to have multiple, multiple sorters of the same type. So, for example, the Blackstone here, we've got four sorters for Blackstone. We also have four for, for Gravel, etc., all the way along. And you can see here uh, all the items that you can get from people in bartering from the blackstone the gravel spectral arrows all the way along here you can see all of these items all get sorted now depending on how many items the piglins produce we have less less of, less of these columns uh, but yeah that's all times properly now at the end we have some different sorters because we want to sort out uh, the bottles from the boots and books that you get these are soul speed books and boots and also we get fire resistance and also water bottles so the water bottles and fire resistance are in here and then the books and the boots are over here now that is done up here at the very end so if we get past all of these item sorters that means we're only left with any kind of overflow or any of the items here so that goes into another sorter here this one right here which is uh, to sort out uh, the bottles so basically this is another impulse sv sorter i'll link uh, to his video in the description of how to do this but this will sort out all the bottles which which then get rooted uh, via these hoppers right here into these uh, these uh, these uh, these chests over here and then whatever's left over which is should be the books or the boots or any kind of uh, overflow that's made it through the system there shouldn't be much of it but if there is then that will end up here in these chests and then right at the very end, we have this uh, overflow as well. So if uh, all of the chests get all filled up all the way along and there's nothing, nowhere else for any more items to go, it gets dispensed into this lava. So everything gets destroyed if there is any overflow. The next interesting thing here is how we point the hoppers to make sure the items get sorted uh, into the right chests. So here we have the standard item sorters as we saw before. Now. Over here we have the example of blackstone. So there are four four columns of blackstone. That's because you get a lot of blackstone. And what happens is as the items come across, most of it will get filled up uh, into the first silo, but then some may go into the second or even the third or even the fourth. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, yeah we uh, we fill up all of these chests. So what will happen is this first column will get filled up first. So because there is a priority of uh, of items going downwards first of all, uh, any items that come down here will go down uh, through these hoppers and down through these hoppers into these chests. But once this once this hopper then gets filled up the items will then go from this hopper into this hopper here and then down into this column and likewise once this column gets filled up the items uh, will then have to go this way then down into this column and then once that gets filled up the items will go down here and then down into this column so we don't want any items going this way because these items are for something different they're for the uh, for the gravel so this hopper here is pointing downwards to make sure that we only go in this way and once this gets filled up here they will then in an overflow situation and the items will go along to the end and end up in this fire over here because they won't get picked up by anything else over here so so when we get to the build and uh, talk about this uh, in a bit more detail, make sure that you get these hoppers pointing in the right direction. All of, most of these are pointing this way, but you can see there are some that are pointing downwards and that's very important to make sure your items are sorted correctly. If you want to build this farm for yourself, here is the material list. So you can see there's not that many blocks. So I'm going to slow, slowly uh, scroll down this list so you can pause as you need to. I'll also put this in the description below so you can get a full list of all the items you need before you build this farm. Also in the description, there will be a well download. So get this thing downloaded and you can make a schematic of you if, if you like, like I have here, or you can uh, yeah just download it and test it for yourself. So let's get this thing built and I'll show you how to do it. Before we build the farm, we need to have enough space to do so. Uh, you might want to build this on the nether roof where you have your gold farm. And don't forget, this has to be in the nether for the piglins to not convert. So in terms of space, you're going to need 14 blocks deep from uh, this side to this side. That's the front to the back. You're going to need in terms of height, you're going to need 15 blocks of space. And in terms of the width, you are going to need 43 blocks wide. So the first thing to do is to build a hopper clock. This is a standard hopper clock I'm sure you've seen before. So I can just... Uh, Take, you just take a look at here of how you build it. You have these two hoppers pointing into each other. Make sure there are 
22 items uh, in this hopper. It doesn't matter what the items are. You have the uh, have the comparators, redstone on each side, and two sticky pistons with a block in between. We have this block here with the lever on top. This is the on and off switch. So at the moment it's off, but then of course, if you flip that, it will come on again. Now, the way to place this is to make sure that this block here is right in the corner. You can see that this, this block is right above this corner right here. And in terms of height, you need to have seven air blocks uh, from here up to here. So then you can build this on the eighth block uh, above the above the floor of where you're going to build. Next, add an observer here facing the arm of this sticky piston that's extended. And then behind it, we need to have these three repeaters just like this. You can see that the first one here is on max settings, uh, but these are just in, in, in a normal default position. Then at the end here, we have to have a redstone torch. This will control the piston that sends the items that way across the hoppers. On top of this torch, add a sticky piston and then add a slime block to the end of it. Then come over here, we add the, uh, add the other redstone here and you can see that on this, this block here that's powered by the, uh, re the repeater on full, on full signal, uh, place a repeater down facing this way and add that to max settings too. That goes into a block, which then has uh, some redstone here that goes into another block. And on top of that block, add a sticky piston with a slime block on the front. Next, add three droppers in this position right here, and then come around the back and add a hopper point into the back of this one, the bottom one, and a hopper pointing into the back of the top one. Then add a hopper pointing into the side of this one, and then one on top of the hopper pointing downwards, and then have another hopper pointing to the side of this hopper, and then two more facing into that one right there. So that means that all of the droppers can now get fed uh, all of their gold equally by these three uh, hoppers on the top. Next, we'll finish up the gold delivery. So put uh, some iron bars here, here and here, then place a rail on top of this hopper right here. Then get a hopper minecart, place it on top of this one and then break the rail just like that. Then you've got to push this uh, hopper minecart right up against uh, the two, uh, two iron bars just like that. You can check it's in the right place by pressing F3 and B and you should see your hitbox there is right in the corner just like that. So we can turn that off with F3 and B again. Then get yourself a double chest, place it on top of this, uh, uh, this iron bar here and this one here. So any items that get put into this chest will then get fed into the uh, into the hopper minecart and then evenly distributed across all the hoppers and then into the three droppers. Next, come around to the back of the droppers and on this block here where we have uh, the redstone torch already, place a temporary block here, then another block next to it, remove the temporary block, then add a redstone torch here on this side, then add another solid block on top of the redstone torch. Then you can add your repeater on top of this hopper here, pointing into the dropper, and then add two redstone dust on top here. That will pulse uh, eight times, that is your burnout clock. Now this gets triggered uh, whenever there is a redstone update close by. So when this, uh, when this uh, repeater gets updated due to the normal clock, this will also trigger the burnout clock. Next, to stop some mob spawning, add a glass block on top of this sticky piston here and then fill all of this in here, which gives you a platform to stand on uh, so you can uh, add items to your chest up here, but also means that none of the blocks here underneath will spawn any mobs. Next, come around to the front and grab some leaf blocks, place two here on top of the sticky piston and the slime block, come underneath, place two here just like that, and then place one in front, get rid of that one, and then another one here just like that. Then get some glass blocks, you can see the piglins inside, put two here just like that, one here, one here, and then one on top next to the bar just like that. We'll talk about how to get the piglins in there later on, but that is the chamber ready for the piglins. Next up, put a double chest next to this slime block like this, and then put two blue ice uh, underneath with buttons on the top to make sure no mobs can spawn. Make sure it is blue ice and not other types of ice because you don't want your ice melting. And also blue ice is more slippery and that makes sure that all the items make it across all of the uh, item filters we're gonna build next. So this is what a standard item filter looks like. So you can see here we have three hoppers here all pointing that way. We then have a comparator, three redstone dust. We have this repeater facing this way. And then behind here, we have uh, this uh, this torch here. So this is one. You now need to make another 27 all next to each other. So there will be 28 item filters in total, all looking exactly the same across here. With that done, your 28 item filters will look something like this. Then come around to the front and then we'll add our hoppers pointing downwards in the right place. So let's start off over here at this side where the piglins are gonna be. First of all, leave a gap of three, then have one hopper pointing down just like this. Another gap of three, another hopper pointing downwards, a gap of two, then your hopper, another gap of two, hopper, gap of two, hopper, gap of one, hopper, one, hopper, one, and then you should have one, two, three, four, five, six hoppers all pointing down next to each other. Then in these gaps you've got here, place the uh, place the hopper pointing into uh, this hopper onto the left. So one goes here, pointing this way, this one goes here, pointing this way, et cetera, et cetera, all the way along, filling in all of these gaps. Once you've done that, these hoppers along this line should look like this. You can see all those hoppers pointing sideways and the hoppers pointing downwards just like that. Let me come back so you can see uh, all the hoppers. So hopefully you can get a good count of where those hoppers should be. 
Next, under all these hoppers here, we need to add six double chests, just like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and into each of those have a hopper pointing into each of the chests. And that top hopper here should be underneath this one right here. So do that again, repeat it all the way along there, so you've got that for all 28 salters. Once you've done that, your farm should look something like this with all the hoppers and all of the chests underneath. Now come around to the back so we can program all of the item sorters. Now we're gonna have multiple sorters for each item. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first of all, for each of these hoppers along the top, go into them and add a rename item to these last four slots here. So you see, I've done that for all of these four here, just like that, do that all the way along for all of the hoppers. Then I'm gonna put a list on screen of all of the uh, all of the items that can be sorted and how many of each you need. So for example, we're gonna have Blackstone in the first one, in the second one, in the third one, and also in this fourth one. So we're gonna have four sorters for Blackstone, then we're gonna have Gravel. So on the, list, on the screen now is a list of all the items and how many sorters you need for each one. Of course, feel free to pause the video to take a closer look. Once you've programmed all of your item filters, come around to the very end here, and now we're going to add some more storage. So here we need to add uh, three more columns of double chests, just like this, in the same fashion we did over here. So these three here, one, two, and three, all have hoppers just pointing to the back of them, just like that, so nothing special there. And then next to those, add another another six double chests, but this way, but this this time, uh, have them facing this way. And then on the, uh, on the uh, right hand side of them, add hoppers going into the back of those as well. Next, we're going to work on the sorting of the potions and the books and whatnot. So to do that, we're gonna build this section up layer by layer. So here, let's have a look at this. So in line with these uh, the top, uh, top chests here, add a glass block just here in line with the chests. You can see that there. And then add uh, any kind of solid blocks here like this. You can see there's missed a gap there. Then we have this two under L shape, this block here, the gap here. And then these two blocks here should line up with uh, this hopper here and in line with it just like that. Next, we need to add some more hoppers. So come to the very end of your chests here to this line here, which is the last line of the of the single column uh, chests just here. Come around to the back and on the top hopper here, add one hopper facing downwards. Then you need to add these hoppers just here. So if I, if I hold on top, you can see how these hoppers are pointing. So pause the video here to make sure you get these hoppers pointing correctly. And then on the uh, on this hop, these two hoppers over here have a, a dropper pointing this way. So you can see here, this is where all of the hoppers are and how they're aligned. If you come to the dropper now at the end and add some glass blocks around it just like this and then that means you can place a, uh, a lava source in front of it to destroy any overflow items. Next to uh, next to the dropper add a target block just here and then on the blocks we've already placed add this uh, add this redstone. So we need to have a comparator here make, that in, make sure that's in subtraction mode and then add some redstone here just like this. So I'll hover above here so you can see how this redstone is set up. Next, put a dropper down on top of this hopper right here, and then in front of that, add a brewing stand. Then next to this dropper you just added, add three hoppers pointing into it. Then get yourself some composters and place that on all of these hoppers here. This is just to reduce a little bit of lag, all of those. There we go, that's all you need to do. Next, come to the dropper that's behind the brewing stand, and you want to add a comparator here pointing into a block, and after that block, we have a redstone torch just here. Then we need to add some solid blocks here. So you can see we've got one here, and then we've got these three here, and then this one here. So if I hold like that, you can see the shape of those blocks. Next, add a powered rail on top of the dropper here in front of the brewing stand. Then add a piece of redstone dust on top of the uh, top of this uh, hopper that goes into it, just here. Then behind it, add a repeater facing this way on the second setting, just there. And then we add a redstone dust onto this block here. Now we need to have two more solid blocks, one here and one here. And then add a target block next to the repeater and a dispenser next to that. Now this dispenser is here to get rid of the splash potions. Uh, I don't feel like uh, splash potions are worth keeping. So basically all the items here are dispensed out. All the items will then fall into here and then get processed, but any of the splash potions will get smashed and uh, yeah, will explode. And to turn this dispenser into a smart dispenser, we need to add a comparator behind in subtraction mode into a block, into a redstone dust that goes into another block. Then we have a repeater on, on normal settings and then a redstone dust that should go into the, uh, into the target block right here. We're almost done. What I've done now is added three of these glass blocks around here. So when the uh, potions are dispensed out of here, they can smash against the, against the glass. Then I've also added glass blocks on top of all of these blocks here. That is to make sure that no mobs spawn on top of them. These ones here as well. And also these at the back here as well. The last thing to do is to add two more blocks of blue ice to our ice way. Also put buttons on the top so uh, no mobs can spawn on them. Grab yourself a hopper and feed it into uh, the dispenser here. And then a hopper going into that one. Then get some netherrack, put two here, like that and like that. And then light this up. Again, this is to counteract any overflow in case uh, all of this stuff gets filled up. Uh, items won't, won't collect here and they'll get destroyed by the fire. 
Now to finish off the build, you can add a ladder over here to make it nice and easy to get up to this platform here. This means you've got access to the on and off switch and also access to uh, put the gold uh, into the chest here. Obviously you can add more chests here if you want, if you want to uh, have a backlog of, uh, of backlog of gold, that's all cool. The other thing I didn't mention here is probably a good idea to put um, a, a leaf block in here next to the slime, just to make sure that if you drop any items, they won't fall through this hole. And also make sure you don't put any glass in here because that will then stick to uh, the slime block on the other side. And lastly, how do you get your piglins into the chamber? Well, I tend to use this, this setup, which is quite straightforward. So you have uh, this little runway here and then uh, have, have a block that you can easily break on top of the uh, on top of the chamber here. So here I've replaced the glass we did have there with uh, with some dirt. And then next to it, have uh, have this trap door. Now this trap door is placed like this. So if you put two blocks here, you can see this is uh, on the top of those two blocks. So that means that we can run underneath it, but the piglin can't and they will end up stopping on top of this block here. Now, just to make sure he doesn't try and run around, add some blocks around it. So a couple there and a couple there as well. Now, if I was to break these two here, and then if I stand here and go into uh, go into survival mode, he will run after me and I can just come past here. He then stops and then we can break this uh, at our leisure and then he falls in. Then of course we can put, uh, put the block back again and then go and get another piglin. So don't forget the piglins only spawn in the Crimson Forest. So you probably want to build this somewhere close to a, a, a Crimson Forest. If you're doing this on the nether roof, then lay down a platform of blocks uh, so they can spawn and then they can chase you over here and you can get them into your farm. So there you have it. That is how you build a piglin bartering setup that uses 24 piglins to barter away a lot of gold and get all the items sorted without any issues. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you have any comments or suggestions, then get in that comment section. All right, my geeks, till next time, I will see you later.